I just walked in on my girlfriend of seven years did it with my roommate. My last class of the day was canceled, so I decided to come home and surprise my girlfriend. I went to the store and grabbed everything to make her favorite meal, lasagna. I was carrying the bags up the stairs and put them down in front of the door to fish my keys out of my pocket, and then I heard my girlfriend moaning. I thought that she was taking care of herself, because I know that she likes to do that sometimes when I'm not around. So I didn't have a sudden aha moment or anything. I walked in and there were her and my roommate on the couch. I opened the door and kind of just froze when I saw it. She looked up and me and he turned around and saw it was me. And I just saw red. As much as I wanted to, I didn't kick his butt. I just dropped the bags and walked away. As I was getting into my car, they both came running out and yelling at me to stop. But I just floored it and got out of there as quickly as I could. I called my best friend and talked to him about it. He offered to come kick his butt. I told him no. I didn't want him to get in trouble from it. I even had the engagement ring that I planned to use to propose to her this summer when we went on vacation. It's in my safe that I keep in the closet, so I know that she doesn't know about it. But I planned to spend the rest of my life with her. Why didn't I see this coming? My last class was supposed to start at 12, but since it was canceled, I was home by 12.30. So it's been four plus hours. My phone has been blowing up from both of them. I haven't looked at any of the messages or answered any of the calls. I called my bank and made sure that she wasn't not on any of my accounts for anything. I'm going to go back later tonight and pack up all of her stuff and drop it off at her place tomorrow. Then I'll probably take a bag of clothes to my friend's house and stay there until school ends. Three weeks. What do I do next? Update. First, I want to thank each and every one of you who have given me advice, offered me an ear to rant yell to, or offered me a shoulder to cry on. After my first edit, many of you messaged me and asked me not to drink, that I was better than that, that this wasn't the thing to do. I sincerely appreciate that. My friend and his sister took me out to dinner to try to get my mind off of everything. At first, I wasn't in really up to going, but I figured that it would be better to try to focus my mind on something different. My friends called up a couple of my other friends, and the six of us went out to dinner. At first, I wasn't really into it. I was kind of down. But my friends did anything and everything that they could to cheer me up. I can honestly say that I love my friends and everything that they've done for me. My best friend's sister, Emily, went through all the messages on my phone from the both of them and deleted anything that didn't need to be on there. She texted both of them from my phone, telling them that it was her that was texting, and told her that a friend would be by at a certain time to pick up my stuff tomorrow, and she told him that I would be by tomorrow to grab some things, and that I was going to try to get out of the lease by talking to my landlord. I want you all to know that I've read through each and every one of these comments, and that I've read through every message that's been sent to me on here. I plan on replying to a couple tonight or tomorrow. I'm really tired, but wanted to let you all know how much you've helped me. Finally, to the people that have been in the same position as I'm currently in, or to those that have been in a situation even relatively similar, I have a couple things. First, none of what your ex-SO did says anything about you. It tells what kind of person they are. Your reactions tell the kind of person that you are. Secondly, all of you are much stronger than you realize. Many of you have given me such amazing advice, and you know exactly where I'm coming from. Talking about it isn't it always the easiest, and many of you did to try to help an internet stranger, so thank you. Finally, many of you have much greater things to look forward to. Like one of old teachers said, it's like moving on to the next book in the sequence. Yeah, you may have to wait a little bit for the author to release it, but it's worth the wait. Also, to the kind individual that gave me gold, thank you. I plan on donating $5 tomorrow to a charity because of you. For anybody else that would like to, pick your favorite charity and donate, or just do something nice for somebody else. It can have a huge impact on their life. Edit. I'm at my best friend's house. Him and his sister have been super awesome to me. Their doorbell rang about five minutes ago. It was her. His sister witched her out. I wanted to go yell at her, but I started drinking Fireball instead. It's going to be a long couple weeks until school gets out. Update. First, 
I want to thank everybody for the help and many kind words that were sent my way. Seriously, thank you. I'll start with what happened afterwards and work my way up to today and that's the only reason that I'm making an update only a week later. Emily, my best friend's sister, texted both of them informing them informing that I'd be coming by to get stuff. Emily would be going to my ex-SOS. I went with my best friend, Trevor, and Emily to get some stuff from my apartment. My roommate wasn't there, but he left me a note saying that he's sorry and attempting to explain the situation. I threw it away, after reading it, grabbed some stuff and loaded it into my car. I drove back to their house while the two of them then went to my ex's apartment to grab my stuff. My ex was there and at first she wouldn't let them in. She yelled at them to go away through the door and after about 15 minutes of them sitting there, she eventually opened up and let them in to collect my things. They grabbed my PS4, movies, cookware, clothes, and some random other things. She cried the whole time and asked them if they would tell me that she's sorry. It was a one-time thing. I would do anything to change it. They didn't say a word, although she was crying into an older hoodie of mine, so they left that there. I'm not too torn up about that. I told a few select friends what happened and asked if they would watch the doors to my classroom when I had classes, as I didn't want to cause a scene. Nothing on Wednesday, but she stood outside one of my teaching classes on Thursday. I went in through a different door, and thankfully she didn't see me. Friday is the day that really upsets me. As I said in the last post, in a reply, I'm an education major and I have my practicums this semester. Our education building has two floors, and the first floor is a laboratory school, an elementary school that has a lot of education students come in and do their practicums or observations, while the second floor has classrooms for education students. My practicum is with third graders, and she stood outside the door to my third grade classroom waiting for me. We have name tags and only have to show those to the desk to get in. She used to be an education major, but switched majors. Therefore, it wasn't too uncommon for her to be in there. I saw her, and my heart immediately sank. I decided to just walk by her and ignore her. She saw me and started crying and trying to talk to me. I didn't say a word but just walked into the classroom. My cooperating teacher asked her to leave, but all my students that were there had already seen it. They started bombarding me with questions, but I just stuck with, it's nothing important right now. We can talk about it later but we need to focus on our learning right now. But honestly, it killed me inside. I explained the situation to my cooperating teacher and asked her to watch out for if she came back again. She said that she would and would ask her to leave if she saw her again. I received a few text messages this weekend from her and her roommate that was extremely annoying. I got an insane amount of phone calls and I got a ton of Facebook messages. Trevor and Emily also received quite a few as well, I worked all weekend and threw myself into lesson plans and projects due. I also went and played a round of golf with some friends. Today is really why I'm updating. I got a text from my ex at around 7. 15p. She told me that she was pregnant and that it was mine. I screenshotted the conversation. I'm trying to stay calm, but if she truly is pregnant and the baby is mine, then that throws a whole wrench into everything. Can anybody give me some advice on what to do next? I'm trying to remain as calm as I can, but this is really big and I'm starting to freak out. Thank you all. Here's the text conversation. Her. I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry that I messed up our future, but I think that we just got a second chance. I know that this isn't it what you wanted to hear, but I'm pregnant. Maybe this is why I made my mistake. Me. You can use a pregnancy to explain cheating. It doesn't work like that. I want a pregnancy test. Not one from the store, but to actually go to the doctor and have them do that. If it turns out that you are pregnant, then I want a paternity test. Her. Fine. I'll call the doctor tomorrow and set up an appointment. But if I am pregnant, can we have a second chance? Me. No. All I want to know from you is when and where the appointment is. She seems to calm for this to this to just be a joke. She's been bat crap crazy for almost the past week and now she's extremely calm. I'm honestly extremely scared. Update. Hey, everybody. I've been asked multiple times for an update, but it's been super busy, and I actually have a little time today, so I thought I would update everybody on my situation. 
My ex made a doctor's appointment for a couple of days after my last post. She sent me a text with the date and time and asked me if I would be going with her. I told her that I wouldn't it, but that I wanted Emily to go with her. She straight up refused and said this was our baby and that if I didn't go, she would cancel the appointment and wait until I was ready to go. We argued for a little bit until I gave in. I told her that I would meet her there and I would stay for the entire thing, but I was going to be stone silent the whole time unless the doctor asked me a question. Her appointment was at 9.15 that morning. I showed up at 9.10 and sat across from her in the waiting room. The doctor called her back a couple of minutes later. They talked for a couple of minutes, she asked her some questions, and then she had her go to the restroom to pee in a cup. I made sure that her purse and everything stayed in the room. Somebody warned me she would be crazy enough to buy a pregnant woman's pee and use that instead. After she gave the cup to the doctor, the doctor left, and then she tried to talk to me. I sat there and ignored her and texted my friends until the doctor came back and confirmed that she was pregnant. I started shaking and tried to control my breathing, but my ex was so excited and the doctor was excited with her. Then came the ultrasound and my ex was roughly 11 weeks pregnant. After a couple of minutes, I excused myself and left. I texted her as I was leaving that before anything else happens, we're having a paternity test. First off, Non-invasive prenatal testing is super expensive. I told her that I would pay for half, but that if the child wasn't mine, then she would have to pay me back for that. She told me that her parents were willing to pay for it. Her parents have more money than I would know what to do with, like millionaires' money. I told her that my ex-roommate was taking the test as well. She said that he didn't need to, and I snapped, saying that, I guess I can wait another six months because they want to put my name on the birth certificate until they prove I'm the father. She finally agreed with me and made him take the test as well. There's a place around here that actually specializes in DNA testing, so we were able to get in just a couple days later. She brought her mom with her. They told us that they would have the results in 10 days and that we could come pick them up or they could mail them to us. We said we would pick them up in person. I was too nervous to go to the results. Emily and Trevor both went in place for me. According to them, my ex wasn't happy that I wasn't it there and almost refused to let them see the results, but her mom told her that she could understand why I didn't want to be there. I'll never forget that phone call from Emily Emily. Hey. Me. Well, Emily. You're not the dad. You should have seen the look on your ex-roommate's face, though. He's the dad. I didn't make this clear. Sorry. At this point, I squealed like a little girl. My ex attempted to text me later, and I just ignored all of them. Both of her parents did text me, though, saying that they wish me well with teaching. That really meant a lot to me. As for other things in my personal life, I've gotten a new apartment over by Trevor and Emily. My ex doesn't know where I live at the moment. Her number is blocked, she's blocked on Facebook, and everything else that I could think of to block her on. I've joined a summer baseball league and I play for that two times a week. I'm volunteering in the preschool classrooms on campus in the mornings. My job is giving me more hours, requested. I'm taking three summer classes and I'm the ASL tutor for the summer classes now that they have started. I also bought a bike and now I ride that daily as well. I also got a kitty. His name is Jasper. And I read a lot more now. I realized that I wasn't reading as much as I normally did while I was with my ex, but I've gotten back to reading. My friends are saying that I'm too busy now and that I have even less time than I did when I was with my ex. I like that. The busier I stay, the less I think about her, and the happier I am. There's a week between the summer classes that I'm tutoring this summer, and Emily, Trevor, Emily's best friend, and I are going on a five-day hiking camping trip. I want to say thank you for everybody that helped me through this. The support that you've all given me has really helped me. There are still the people that are saying this isn't true, but I'm receiving a lot more positive support than negative. No, Emily and I are not going to date. For the many people that have asked, I'm sorry to disappoint you and say that we're not. I don't see her in a romantic way, and I plan on staying single for a while. I'll be finishing up my BS in elementary education this upcoming school year, and then I still need to decide whether to continue schooling and pursue my MS in deaf education and deaf studies, 
or whether I should start teaching. Update. I moved closer to home, about an hour away, so that I could help my parents. My dad is sick. And because I got a job. I teach first grade. I came home from school one day and saw a letter taped to my door. Not in my mailbox, but taped to the door. So I took it inside and read it. It was from my ex. It included a long four-page letter giving me reasons why I should take her back and why we are great together. There were also multiple pictures of the baby who is not mine. First, I have no idea how she figured out where I live. Second, she moved closer to here hoping that I would take her back. I asked Trevor and Emily and they said that her place was now up for rent so she's not there anymore. The post office wanted just tape stuff to your door so she had to have done it. She has called my school twice, pretending to be a parent of a child in my class. Once, I got called to the office to take the call. The second time, the secretary asked her to stop calling the school, after I informed her and the principal of the situation. I gave both of them a picture of her so that they want to buzz her in. I live in a house, and not an apartment building or anything, so there is not really much I can do. I can let my landlord know about it, but he's not often over here so he wouldn't know if she's here. My other neighbors work during the day, so I don't think they would notice if she was here. I do plan on letting them know, just in case, though, since one of them does have a spare key to my house. I inform my parents of what's going on, but they said that she has an at-been-by-their-house, so that's a relief. My two best friends don't live here to help, so that stinks. Plus, most of the friends that I've made are other teachers at the school, and I don't want to burden them with this, especially since I'm new. I'm very close to getting a restraining order, but I don't know how to go about it. Or how to get her served with one since I don't know exactly where she is. I'm afraid that she's going to drive by the school and try to come up to me while I'm outside at recess. Or attempt to add parents of the kids that I teach on Facebook. I don't want this to destroy my career, so I'm completely stumped on what to do. I have no idea how she knew where I moved to or anything. I haven't heard from her in months, so I thought that all was going well. And then this happens. The girl that I'm talking to is furious, not with me, and wants to help, but she doesn't know how. Plus, I would prefer for them never to meet. Is there any advice on what I should do?